How the Rister just got a brand new massive patch, with some huge buffs, nerfs, and even mechanic changes to planets. Additionally, even their philosophy going forward for patches. We also have some big rumors and speculations around Arrowhead and Sony. We have a few PSAs that will help you in your playthrough, as well as a pre-launch trailer that might give us some hints for the future. We got a ton to talk about. What's up, bro? It's your bit back here to check on all things Helldivers 2. But before we jump into the patch notes, we do have that official confirmation for the actual mechs. This was tweeted out by the official Helldivers 2 Twitter, where they said the XO45 Patriot exosuits are in full production in factories, and they are ready for deployment on the battlefield soon. So we should see those mechs sometime soon. Okay, so let's just jump right into the patch notes. However, we do have that opening statement as usual, which is over on the Discord, and this one is quite long though. Although I will try to break it down into a much more summarized version. Now, first up, this was posted by Baskinator over on the Discord. We said we issued a patch for PC players. A PS5 patch is coming soon. We will let you know when it's ready. That introduces planetary hazards, balance updates, and even more. Now, this specific next section here was written by Alex K, who wanted a few words about the balancing approach in Helldivers 2. Again, this is a very long segment here, but I'm gonna try to break it down. Their first opening statement here said they wanted to keep it completely transparent to the approach to the game's balance and their goal is a wide weapon variety choice where each gun has its purpose and none is strictly better than the other however as we know we've had a lot of weapons that have been kind of off balance and kind of overpowered they use two different examples here with the ac8 auto cannon which is a good example of a well-balanced weapon they said it packs a powerful punch, has a very good range, but it requires you to carry an ammo backpack or even have a friend assist you. Whereas the GL-21 grenade launcher is the opposite example. It's a good general purpose weapon that gives you so much flexibility. It obviously can't deal too much damage without becoming overpowered. They also went on here to list two different weapons and an item, stating that these were no-brainer choices and kind of meta builds that made it unfair for the choice between fun and an effective item. Those three individual items here were the SG-225 breaker shotgun, as we all know the RS-422 railgun, and the SH-32 shield generator backpack. They went on here to clarify saying that all three of those choices were quite strong with little to no downsides, overshadowing other options at higher difficulties. So with this patch, they're getting significant downsides to balance their power. Now they did go on to clarify here saying that on a personal note, they know that having your favorite toy nerfed is absolutely terrible, but they did go on to say that they implore you to not compare a changed item with its older version, but to evaluate its existing one as it is. They also did go on here to specifically talk about the railgun, where they said the railgun was overperforming in its ease of use and convenience. They therefore made it so that the safe mode of the railgun is not able to penetrate heavier armor, but the unsafe overcharge mode is still able to penetrate the heavier armor. In addition, the damage the railgun does to massive body parts is reduced, meaning that you will need to land headshots and other specific weak point shots for its maximum efficiency. That does cover for the opening statement, so jumping over into the patch notes, where we have our first discussion on a major update happening to the planet mechanics. So as in one of my last video over those environmental hazards, they have actually added those in. So now planetary hazards are active. Many planets now have additional environmental challenges that will appear at random while you're all deployed, from fire tornadoes to meteor showers and many more. Again, potentially that acid rain and a few others that I discussed in the previous video. We had a significant nerf to that AFK farm as well as that green sample farm, which were those eradicate missions that now require more downs and enemy spawns more often. The time to complete the mission was previously shorter than intended and should now take twice as long to complete. Seems like they didn't think people would take a full loadout of sentries, which completely decimate those missions and you can do them in 2-3 to three minutes. So seemingly so, those should take around 4-6 to six minutes now, which is quite the nerf to the XP farm, although it isn't too bad. And it still should be good for green sample farming as well. Now we do have those weapon changes to primary and support weapons, where the breaker shotgun had its magazine capacity reduced from 16 to 13, and they also drastically increased the recoil from 30 to 55 which is nearly a 100% increase. The SG-8 Punisher had an increased total ammo capacity from 40 to 60, and an increased stagger force, as well as increased damage from 40 to 45 per bullet. The 225 SP Breaker Spray and Prey had its increased armor penetration, as well as increased fire rate from 30 to 330, and increased pellets from 12 to 16 per shot. We also had a decreased magazine size from 32 to 26. Again, we did have that railgun nerf here, which is decreased armor penetration in safe mode, and they decreased the damage against durable enemy parts. Again, if you aren't familiar, you can actually disable the safe mode on the railgun when you do land. This will allow you to fully charge up the weapon, however, if you do, you have the potential of hurting yourself. And again, that safe mode is on by default. Now, the flamethrower actually had its damage increased by 50% per second, which seems to be a pretty big damage increase. We'll have to wait and see if the flamethrower is actually viable now. I do know that a lot of people were having struggle with it, especially with it being a later weapon to unlock. The laser cannon had its damage increased against durable enemy parts, and an increased armor penetration, as well as improved ergonomics. And as I went over in one of my previous videos, the ergonomics is the handling of the weapon. We also had some stratagem changes, of course, that being the shield generator backpack first, which had its increased delay before recharging. I still feel the shield generator backpack is still going to be taken, so I do feel like it needs to be nerfed for its health. 
or its overall shield capacity, but we'll have to wait and see on that with this balance change here. The Orbital 120mm HE Barrage got its increased duration of its bombardment, and they decreased the spread. This also happened to the 380mm HE Barrage. So now those shouldn't feel as off or throwing them at your feet and trying to avoid them. I know a lot of people said they were completely useless, so hopefully this does fix those there. Although I doubt they're going to be taken over the Orbital Laser or even the 500kg. We had that major armor fix finally come to fruition, where they fixed the rating values not reducing damage as intended. So now light armor will actually take increased damage and heavy armor will be more significant in the later levels. They also fixed certain bug holes, including the Stalker's Nest that were unnecessarily hard to destroy. They fixed the anti-aliasing toggle not working on PS5. So you should see less jagged edges over there on the PS5 version. Balance lighting across all planets to solve cases where the game was too dark. Which I can say was probably typical mostly of the red planets or even those eradicate missions on the automaton levels. Which also came with the improved flashlight efficacy. So planets should be even less dark now if they were before. They increased the visibility during sand rain rather on the errata prime. They updated the tutorial materials and lighting which also applied to materials causing blurry lighting or when the graphic setting was set to too low. There were some timing issues with Extract E710 that should now be fixed. They finally changed how the bunker POIs work, where essentially where you would hold down on the button, where it wouldn't let you off until you use that interact key again. Now it should let you off after a few seconds of holding. They fixed some cases of large assets floating if the ground beneath them was blown up. Helldivers standing next to the ICBMs during launch will now properly get toasty with a chance of not so spontaneous combustion. So again, make sure you're not standing at the launch sites. They fixed unthrowable snowballs after ragdolling, which yeah, if you didn't know on the snow planets, you can't actually throw snowballs. They fixed being able to use grenades after drowning, and now spectator mode should work even better because the camera will no longer lock on the player's own corpse and blocking that spectator mode, which I've had happen more than multiple times. They've also made it even harder with friendly fire, where hell divers now take damage from fire, gas, and generated by other players, so do be wary of that if you've been using those grenades or even those tactics that you will now damage your teammates. And now they hopefully fixed the armor no longer stretching when dismembered. We do have that known issues tab, however it is mostly the same from the other patches. However we do have some new ones listed here like players cannot unfriend other players befriended via friend code. Which I have run into before, at least not being able to unfriend or refriend. And another one here that players may be unable to select a loadout or return to ship when joining a multiplayer game session via the PS5 activity card. That does mostly cover for the patch notes and that was a hefty one. Jumping over, we did have a rumor that Arrowhead was being bought out by Sony or already had been. Now this person has been kept up to date with a lot of different rumors like the Ghost of Tsushima coming to PC. However, since this tweet has come out that Sony has already bought Arrowhead, they have since deleted that tweet. And Piles, the CEO on Twitter, went over it saying that this is fake unless I miss something. Which yeah, if the CEO is coming out to say that this is not a potential, then it's probably not going to be the case. Would have been some very bad news for Xbox, although I don't know if Xbox is even going to receive this title at all seeing as it is published by Sony. We'll have to wait and see on that because Xbox needs all the W's they can get. Another late minute mentionable here is that the pre-launch trailer for the map appears to be divided in quarters, which was sectioned off in four different quarters. Now again, this is not the case currently where we do have just those two side quarters. However, potentially the top and the bottom could be different factions. So potentially we might be seeing four different factions in this game. We also have those two PSAs to go over, like the drop sample PSA. Which if you look on the minimap here, you will see that depending on how many samples you dropped, the vial icon will be filled up more or less depending on how many you had. I've also run into this there where the PSA is there is no stratagem bug. Like this one for example, the electronic countermeasure or the stratagem scrambler will actually scramble the codes of your stratagem causing you to potentially throw down an airstrike when you put in a code for an HMG or even a rover pack or a railgun or mortar or whatever have you. I've definitely had this happen before where I thought I put something in and it put something completely down and I dropped the 500kg when I just wanted to call down my auto cannon. Again, so be sure to check out those modifiers and make sure that you're not picking those missions, or if you are, at least know that and understand that you have that modifier there. Overall, that should about cover for today's video. This was a massive patch. We'll have to wait and see on how some of these balance changes do end up playing out. I am curious on your thoughts for this patch. Again, if you enjoyed today's video, like, like, and subscribe. And until next one, deuces.